Good morning, it is Jane with Scraptastic Yarns, and today's Bible reading comes from 2 Samuel 13 through 15. I am reading from the English Standard Version, and we are using the Blue Letter Bible Chronological Order Reading Plan for the, for the year. As always, let's open up with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today praising you for all the things that you do giving you thanks for everything that you do in our lives. Lord, there are many times that we overlook the blessings that you give us. Lord, we ask that we become more aware of those things so that we can also use those things to bless others. Lord, we ask for your discernment in understanding the passages in which we are about to read and how they apply to us in our daily lives today. Even though they were done thousands of years ago we know that it has a meaning for us today a lesson to be learned and a way towards your path for us we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ Amen <clears throat> Hoping the allergies will stay at bay today but there's no guarantee <laughs> now Absalom David's son had a beautiful sister whose name was Tamar. And after a time, Ammon, David's son, loved her. And Amnon was so tormented that he made himself ill because of his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and it seemed impossible to Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very crafty man. And he said to him, O oh, son of the king, why are you so haggard, morning after morning? Will you not tell me? Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Jonadab said to him, Lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill, and when your father comes to see you, say to him, Let my sister Tamar come and give me bread to eat, and prepare the food in my sight, that I may see it and eat it from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill, and when the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please let my sister Tamar come and make a cape, couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat from her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go to your brother Amnon's house and prepare food for him. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, where he was lying down. And she took dough and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and baked the cakes. And she took the pan and emptied it out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Send out every one from me. So every one went out from him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the chamber that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the cakes she had made, and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. But when she brought them near him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come, lie with me, my sister. She answered him, No, my brother, do not violate me, for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do this outrageous thing. As for me, where could I carry my, sh my shame? And as for you, you would be one of the outrageous fools in Israel. Now therefore, please speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. But he would not listen to her, and being stronger than she, he violated her and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her with very great hatred, so that the hatred with which he hated his, her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, Get up, go. But she said to him, No, my brother. For this is wrong, and sending me away is greater than the other that you did to me. But she would not listen to her. He called the young man who served him and said, Put this woman out of my presence and bolt the door after her. Now she was wearing a long robe with sleeves, for thus were the virgin daughters of the king dressed. So his servant put her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head, and tore the long robe that she wore. She laid her head 
hand on her head and went away crying aloud as she went. And her brother Absalom said to her, Has Amnon your brother been with you? Now hold your peace, my sister. He is your brother. Do not take this to heart. So Tamar lived a desolate woman in her brother Absalom's house. When King David heard of all these things, he was very angry. But Absalom spoke to Amnon neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had violated his sister Tamar. Sorry, had a small coughing fit. After two full years, Absalom had sheep shearers at ba Baal Hazar, which is near Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold, your servant has sheep shearers. Please let the king and his servants go with your servant. But the king said to Absalom, No, my son, let us not go at all, lest we be burdensome to you. He pressed him, but he would not go, but gave his blessing. Then Absalom said, If not, please let your brother Amnon go with us. And the king said to him, Why should he go with you? But Absalom pressed him, and until he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Then Absalom commanded his servants, Mark when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say to you, Strike Amnon. Then kill him, do not fear, have I not commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. So the servants of Absalom did to Amnon, as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and each mounted his mule, and fled. While they were on the way, news came to David. Absalom had struck down all the king's sons, and not one of them is left. Then the king arose and tore his garments and lay on the earth, and all his servants who were standing by tore their garments. But Jonadab, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother, said, Let not my lord suppose that they have killed all the young men, the king's sons, for Amnon alone is dead. For by the command of Absalom this has been determined from the day he violated his sister Tamar. Now therefore let not my lord the king so take it to heart as to suppose that all the king's sons are dead, for Amnon alone is dead. But Absalom fled, and the young man who kept the watch lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, many people were coming from the road behind him by the side of the mountain. And Jonadab said to the king, Behold, the king's son have come, as your servant said, so it has come about. And as soon as he finished speaking, behold, the king's son came and lifted up their voice and wept. And all the king and the king also and all his servants wept very bitterly. But Absalom fled and went to Tamai, the son of Amihud, the king of Geshur. And David mourned for his son day after day, and there were three years. And the spirit of the king longed to go out to Absalom, because he comforted, because he was comforted about Ammon, since he was dead. Now Joab the son of Zeruiah knew that the king's heart went out to Absalom, and Joab sent to Tekoa, and brought from there a wise woman, and said to her, Pretend to be a mourner and put on mourning garments. Do not anoint yourself with oil, but behave like a woman who has been mourning. Many days for the dead. Go to the king and speak thus to him. So Joab put the words in her mouth. When the woman of Tekoa came to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and paid homage and said, Save me, O king. And the king said to her, What is your trouble? She answered, Alas, I am a widow. My husband is dead, and your servant has two sons, and they quarreled with one another in the field. There was no one to separate them, and one struck the other and killed him. And now the whole clan has risen against your servant, and they say, Give up the man who struck his brother, that we may put him to death for the life of his brother whom he killed. And so they would destroy the heir also. Thus they would quench my coal that is left, and leave to me, 
leave to my husband neither name nor remnant on the face of the earth. Then the king said to the woman, Go to your house, and I will give orders concerning you. And the woman of Tekoa said to the king, On me be the guilt, my lord the king, and on my father's house. Let the king and his throne be guiltless, the king said. If any one says anything to you, bring him to me, and he shall never touch you again. Then she said, Please, let the king invoke the Lord your God, that the avenger of blood kill no more, and in my son be not destroyed. He said, As the Lord lives, not one hair of your son shall fall to the ground. Then the woman said, Please let your servant speak a word to my lord the king. He said, Speak. And the woman said, Why then have you planned such a thing against the people of God? For in giving this decision the king convicts himself, inasmuch as the king does not bring his banished one home again. We must all die. We are like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. But God will not take away life, and he devises means so that the banished one will remain an outcast will not remain an outcast. Now I have come to say this, my lord the king, because the people have made you afraid, and your servant thought, I will speak to the king, it may be that the king will perform the request of his servant. For the king will hear and deliver his servant from the hand of the man who would destroy me, and my son together from the heritage of God. And your servant thought, the rest of my lord the king will set it set me at rest. The word of my lord the king will set me at rest, for my lord the king is like the angel of God, to discern good and evil. The Lord your God be with you. Then the king answered the woman, Do not hide from me anything I ask you. And the woman said, Let my lord the king speak. The king said, Is the hand of Joab with you in all this? The woman answered and said, as surely as you live, my lord the king, one cannot turn to the right hand or to the left from anything that my lord the king has said. It was your servant Joab who commanded me. It was he who put all these words in the mouth of your servant. In order to change the course of the things, your servant Joab did this. But my lord has wisdom like the wisdom of the angel of God to know all things that are on the earth. Then the king said to Joab, Behold, now I grant this. Go, bring back the young man Absalom. And Joab fell on his face to the ground and paid homage and blessed the king. And Joab said, Today your servant knows that I have found favor in your sight, my lord the king, in that the king has granted the request of his servant. So Joab arose and went to Geshur and brought Absalom, to Jerusalem. And the king said, Let him dwell apart in his own house. He is not to come into my presence. So Absalom lived apart in his own house and did not come into the king's presence. Now in all Israel there was no one so much to be praised for his handsome appearance as Absalom. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head there was no blemish on him. And when he cut the hair of his head, <clears throat> for at the end of every year he used to cut it when it was heavy on him he cut it he weighed the hair of his head two hundred shekels by the king's weight there were born to Absalom three sons and one daughter whose name was Tamar she was a beautiful woman so Absalom lived two full years in Jerusalem without coming into the king's presence then Absalom sent for Joab to send him to the king. But Joab would not come to him, and he sent a second time, but Joab would not come. Then he said to his servants, See, Joab's field is next to mine, and he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. So Absalom's servants sent the field on fire. Then Joab arose and went to Absalom at his house, and said to him, Why have your servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, Behold, I sent word to you, Come here, 
that I may send you to the king to ask, Why have I come from Geshur? It would be better for me to be there still. Now therefore let me go into the presence of the king, and if there is guilt in me, let him put me to death. Then Joab went to the king and told him, and he summoned Absalom. So he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground. <clears throat> Before the king and the king kissed Absalom. After this, Absalom got himself a chariot and horses, and fifty men to run before him. And Absalom used to rise early, and stand beside the way of the gate. And when any man had dispute to come before the king for judgment, Absalom would call to him and say, From what city are you? And when he said, Your servant is of such and such a tribe in Israel, Absalom would say to him, See? Your claims are good and right, but there is no man designated by the king to hear you. Then Absalom would say, Oh, that I were judge in the land, then every man with a dispute might, or cause might come to me, and I would give him justice. And whenever a man came near to pay homage to him, he would put out his hand and take hold of him and kiss him. Thus Absalom did to all of Israel came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And at the end of four years, Absalom said to the king, Please let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed to the Lord in Hebron. For your servant vowed a vow while I lived at Geshur in Aram, saying, If the Lord will indeed bring me back to Jerusalem, then I will offer worship to the Lord. The king said to him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron, but Absalom sent secret messengers throughout the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then say, Absalom is king of Hebron. With Absalom went two hundred men from Jerusalem, who were invited guests, and they went in their innocence and knew nothing. And while Absalom was offering the sacrifices, he sent for Ahithophel the Gilanite, David's counselor from his city, Keilah. And the conspiracy grew strong, and the people of Absalom kept increasing. And a messenger came to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel have gone after Absalom. Then David said to his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, or else there will be no escape for us from Absalom. Go quickly, lest he overtake us quickly, and bring down ruin on us, and strike the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said to the king, Behold, your servants are ready to do whatever my lord the king decides. So the king went out, and all his household after him, and the king left ten concubines to keep the house. And the king went out, and all the people after him, and they halted at the last house. And all his servants passed by him, and all the Cherethites, and all the Pelethites, and all six hundred Giddites who followed him from Gath passed on before the king. Then the king said to Hittai the Giddite, Why do you also go with us? Go back and stay with the king, for you are a foreigner and also an exile from your home. You came only yesterday, and shall I today make you wander about with us since I go? I know not where. Go back and take your brothers with you, and may the Lord show steadfast love and faithfulness to you. But Hittite answered the king, As the Lord lives, and as my lord the king lives, wherever my lord the king shall be, whether for death or for life, there also will, be, will your servant be. And David said to Hittite, Then go, go then, pass on. So Hittite the Giddite passed on with all his men, and all the little ones who were with him. And all the land wept aloud as all the people passed by. And the king crossed the brook Kidron, and all the people passed on toward the wilderness. And Abiathar came up, and behold, Zadok came also with all the Levites, bearing the ark of the covenant of God. 
and they set down the ark of God until the people had all passed out of the city. Then the king said to Zadok, Carry the ark of God back into the city. If I find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me back and let me see both it and his dwelling place. But if he says, I have no pleasure in you, behold, here I am. Let him do to me what seems good to him. And the king also said to Zadok the press, priest, Are you not a seer? Go back to the city in peace with your two sons, Ahimaaz, your son, and Jonathan, the son of Abiathar. See, I will wait at the fords of the wilderness until word comes from you to inform me. So Zadok and Abiathar carried the ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they remained there. But David went up the ascent of the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went, barefoot and with his head covered, and all the people who, who were with him covered their heads. And they went up, uh, weeping as they went. And it was told David, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, please turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. While David was coming to the summit where God was worshipped, behold, Hushai the archite came to meet him. <coughs> with his coat torn and dirt on his head, David said to him, If you go on with me, you will be a burden to me. But if, we, if you return to the city and say to Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, as I have been your father's servant in time past. So now I will be your servant. Then you will defeat for me the counsel of Ahithophel. And are not Zadok and Abiathar the priest with you there? So whatever you hear from the king's house, tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priest. Behold, their two sons are with them there, Ahimaaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them you shall send me everything you hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city just as Absalom was entertaining Jerusalem. And that is it for today's reading. As always, be kind to one another, love one another, and get out there and see this big, beautiful world we live in. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.